What's up everybody, my name is Richard Terrell, I go by Kirby Kid, and you are watching the Mario Maker Workshop. This is a workshop in which random people on the internet have decided to take their game design skills to the next level. We are using Mario Maker 2 as our platform, we're building levels, we're collaborating, we're giving feedback, and we're running everything on a week by week uh, cadence. So every week is a new lesson, we're pushing through a curriculum I created that's largely based off of the design-oriented, topic-based framework, and um, the research that I started with Critical Gaming so many years ago. So to give you a little look at what we are dealing with here, uh, last week and the week before that, we've been covering skill-based games. And for these games, we are taking one skill at a time, and the first skill that we took was the skill of knowledge. Uh, so with knowledge, it's all about what you know. It's all about um, the kind of information you're putting into your head. And you can see here, it's the K in the D card skill spectrum right here. So this is a web page that we'll be launching on our website pretty soon. Uh, you can find all this information on the hub right here where all the lessons will be listed. So if you want to catch up, you can do so. Everything you need to know is right here. Each one of these has uh, description of the topic tells us tells you a little bit about how it works uh, explains a little bit of what the assignment was for that week shows off some of our levels and even includes a stream like this stream for you to catch up on so uh, something incredibly easy to do there is also a page coming for the dexterity skill which is the D and D cart and this was what our assignment number six was all about we took levels from existing Mario games. We found examples of where dexterity was tested particularly uh, distinctly, right? Where there's very specific challenges and you think, wow, that, that's interesting, that tested my stamina or that tested my speed skills and I had to rapidly hit a button for a long period of time. Anything like that, we found cases of it and then we uh, duplicated those examples from existing Mario levels and added a twist to it we made that particular skill easier to do on the one hand and we also made that skill harder to do on the other hand. So that's what's really interesting about uh, the workshop. We are hands-on, we take the topic seriously and we continue to move along by actually doing assignments that test our ability to uh, understand the topic. Hey Bleach, go ahead and mute yourself. I can hear all the noise. Bleach. Lage. There we go. So, we are going to jump right into the levels that we made. Uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated. We do this week to week, so uh, sometimes some of the members are catching up. They'll submit levels from the previous assignments, and we'll just cover them on the next stream like we're doing now. We're going to hop right in, and you will see what we're working with here. I'm going to switch monitors. It may go black for a second, don't worry about it. And we're back. And... And now I'm back. Cool. So for this, I'm going to go down the list. Hey, Cavalier Zion made a new level, Branching Pipe Race. Cool, we'll play that later. Beware of forest mushrooms. Uh, looks like Gollum has a new level. Okay. Assignment number seven, SMB 8-3. Eye movement for the Mario Maker Workshop. Interesting. So, to give you guys a little bit more clue about what we're talking about for today. Um, I'm going to topic. Uh, we are covering the skill of reflex today. And... Do, do, Right here, the D card skills, talking about all the different skills you can have. There's the K, the D, the R, the T, and the A right here at the end. We're talking about reflex, and for the most part, our reflex skills are going to be focusing on uh, how our eyes work. So things that we can react to visually, what, like dynamic visual acuity, uh, the ability to track moving objects, or to keep your gaze steady as your head moves around so that you know the information going into your brain is consistent. Uh, there's stuff like momentary vision, which is how much you can see in an instant, and eye movement, your ability to rapidly switch focus between targets. Uh, then there's stuff like raw reflex, where something happens and you have to hit a button, and then there's 
the more complex type of reflex in which you have to do A if A happens and B if B happens and you have to pick the right one for the right situation. Therefore, typically your reaction times drop when things like that happen. So with Mario Maker, this particular assignment is focusing on eye movement. This way. Okay. I can do this. Maybe my mic should be a little, a little louder. Here we go. Oh, floaty? You made it floaty? <laughs> oh, interesting. I guess this is the easy version, so he tucked me underneath the, uh, the ground here, and now he's gonna take me up to normal gravity. Very clever. Very clever. Here we go. Eye movement. Keeping track of these. Whoa! Yep. I shouldn't have touched him. This is how I used to play it when I played on the NES. Just get in this first guy's face, and then when they jump, you attack. Cool. This is not a checkpoint flag. This- oh! I'm so good. Shouldn't play around with checkpoint flags. But that's kind of interesting about this brick formation. It's kind of designed for you to make these kind of slip-ups anyway. You have to kind of very carefully descend, like you're actually walking downstairs. Oh. We got a whole party. I wonder if the guy's gonna jump down to get me. Nope, they both jumped up. Oh, not good. Nice and simple, right? Oh! Oh, cool. This is testing my uh, ability to remember that this is a secret. Yep. Yep, good job, Greg. Very good. What the? He put a glitch thing at the top. Weird. So you can clearly see that... What were we testing? Eye movement? Uh, keeping your eyes on the hammers is actually a lot more difficult than it seems. They move at a strange arc. Uh, and then the Hammer Brothers are moving left and right, and when they throw it is important, uh, if they jump is important, and, when, and how many they throw is important. So you're just constantly doing the Sasuke where you're like, your eyes are darting left and right over and over. <laughs> I probably should explain what I mean by that, but I'm not. Uh, here we go. Assignment number seven. Assignment reflex for the Vanilla Secret 2 design oriented. Cool. So this is Harbrus, working hard Harbrus uh, in the workshop doing lots of assignments and doing a lot of additional research to improve his game design skills. Really taking it seriously, that's really cool. Alright, let's kill this guy. Okay. So maybe you shouldn't have let me just throw the shell. <laughs> I wonder if that was one or two. Ooh. Wow. Oh, nice. Oh, you dead. <laughs> Neat. We'll have to play that one again. So, yeah, just shoving some enemies into a Mario environment. Uh, they have the ability to rebound and bounce off of each other, that's a thing. Uh, Paracoopas like this have always been the uh, sort of a reflex test. Their bouncing motion in general is harder to deal with. And the hills are moving up and down, so that gives them a lot of extra variation that you may not be taking into account. Haha, <laughs> cool! Oh shoot, that's not how I do it. Ah oh, no, my trick, my fancy trick. <laughs> what if, if they land straight on your head when you're sliding, I guess you still take damage. I guess I, that's obvious. <gasps> that's obvious. Nope. <laughs> Here we go. 
I know, your head's protected. That's kind of very generous. Yeah, that's interesting. Keeping your eye on the floor, just to realize if you're jumping off of a hill or not, and still keeping track of all these moving targets. Interesting. Oh! I couldn't even keep track of like which ones were gonna bounce and which ones weren't. Ah, you turned around from that trap I laid on the ground. Neat. It's interesting how it's not really so much the number of enemies, it's always uh, what their function is, how they're working in that environment that makes things more interesting, more tricky, whatever. Uh, D card dexterity from Leech. So I'll, I'll finish the reflex, which is assignment seven. Yep. Deep cart reflex lights to show the way, react fast. I love this trick right here. You think you're gonna win, and you are not yet. Here we go. I was wondering if he should have made it to where you automatically uh, hit that the way you come out the pipe. What's interesting about this level is you go into this underground part, you hit this, you pick a pipe, and it will spit you back out previous in the level, and you have to just gotta remember what the f to do. <laughs> and uh, that's a really interesting way to test reflex. I mean, even without the darkness for that part, that's an interesting way to test reflex. Oh, I was too early. Try that again. Oop. Ah. Nice. Now I'm gonna get on the top. Ah. That's pretty much the level. We'll go ahead and do this. Really interesting. So this is a level that you may remember seeing before. Uh, this is a... Interesting. 
Marcus, uh, Dr. Haji did a, the same level layout when he was working on... Uh, what was he working on? Uh, knowledge. So this was supposed to be short-term memory and you kind of remember... Ah! You remember what sections uh, repeat so that you can kind of make informed decisions. Oh! Shoot! I think I just made myself a passageway. We'll do the third one. Ah! Ah! Ah, I didn't make that jump, no! That's interesting. Do, 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 do. I landed on that little brick, I'm like, this is fun. I'm like, I think the brick's gonna fall on an enemy. And then from there, I'm like, oh shoot. Oh! I am going too fast. So, here's an alternate, uh, course, right here. Whole different set of reflex challenges, okay? Or, yeah, reflex. Pretty sure this is, uh... Some eye movement? Maybe just raw reflex right here with the snake blocks? So that was the easy version. And we repeat. Moves faster. You never quite know what you're gonna get, and I did not. Oh. Yeah, you just have to react to what you get. That probably could have crushed me right here on the side. Don't let things crush you. Or me. Oh. Yeah, the snake blocks- Oh! In general are very reflex, uh, intensive. Like, you just don't know where they're gonna go, you don't know how long you're gonna have, and you have to just make- make the stuff work. Nice. Oh. Hmm. That was just an extra thing, I guess. Now let's go into the uh, first pipe again. Or the middle pipe to see just how much of a reflex challenge this is. That's so cool. Cool. So that level, in particular, introduced a lot of interesting, uh level design possibilities that extend far beyond this particular assignment and exercise. So I'll show you what I mean over here. So this is our D-card bingo. Uh, two weeks ago we did knowledge, one week ago we did dexterity, and this last week we did reflex. And you can see different members of the workshop are assigning themselves different uh, combinations of both picking a particular sub facet of reflex skills and then picking a particular Mario game uh, in which they need to find a level example of and then extract a thing from. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Marcus picked a Mario Maker story mode even though um, yeah whatever. It all fits. So those are some of the levels. Akamaric made a level. I need to play that one apparently. Uh, but as you can see here our courses tab is where we put every single one of our courses uh, so that we can get consistent feedback. And the, the whole point of this is to get a lot more ex experience thinking in these particular design layers and categories and definitions and groups. And as you can see here, we're doing difficulty design right now. So obviously knowledge, dexterity, reflex, it's all here. And eventually we'll get to fairness before we close out this particular semester. But yeah, you get a lot of experience uh, these first, this orange, red, and green uh, sections here are what I consider to be the core of Mario's design. You know, understanding the thematic elements, uh, building a basic layout that allows Mario to move around well, understanding the role that enemies play in coins and power-ups, and then this is the core Mario, right? But now we're talking about a little bit more abstract things. We're talking about things that apply to far more than just Mario, far more than just video games themselves. So 
getting a lot of interesting application there, but it's important for every member to spend some time in the courses tab to give feedback uh, to the people, right? So on the left side, you can see uh, right here, total, in total, we filled out 2,395 different individual uh, feedback cells. And you can see how many of these courses we have 100% completed on the feedback right here. Uh, it's 21 different categories to consider, basically. Uh, so yeah, it's really good for the workshop. You just, there's a ton of experience, and you need more and more of this to get more and more comfortable with the concepts. It's important to see the concepts in other people's work and in your own, uh, but you can't fill out the feedback for your own. Hey, who's in, the, who's in there? Hey, it's Bleach. Uh, so that's cool too. But for Marcus's idea here, um, I, I, so we have a tab here for gameplay ideas, and this is any single idea that you have, whether you're looking at somebody else's level or you think of something yourself, you log it in here, you get points for it, it's all good. Um, reading by candlelight is what that last level just showed you, which is why I put this particular idea in here. A dark level with small lighted objects and events that you have to pay attention to in order to progress quickly or safely. Just a basic kind of application of the darkness theme, but it's very particular with uh, how it defines the lights being used. Uh, course correct, ways for players to access or choose completely different areas or mini courses to play through. Each are correct in that they lead to the final goal post without having to play through the other. Inspired by Dr. Hodge's Descartes assignments. That's another idea we put in there. And what's cool is Mario isn't just some abstract game, right? It's a person that goes through environments and what's even more interesting is the levels convey specific ideas. Like some levels are puzzles, some levels are races, some levels are, that's races. Some levels are uh, just standard courses. But even beyond that, like the theme of the course, the ideas that come across, like maybe you're being hunted by booze and you find like a, a lucky star to, to shoot out of there or whatever, like all those kind of um, concepts that would be good for a movie or you can imagine seeing it on some kind of TV show or something. Uh, it's part and parcel with how we understand the gameplay ideas for these levels. So we collect all of them and we categorize them to various categories uh, as much as possible and we collect these because what we're trying to achieve here in the workshop is not just people making one good level. We want to be able to consistently make many good levels and we want to be able to do many different varieties of that. So in order to do that, we have to stretch ourselves, stretch our understanding of Mario and stretch our ability to do different things. So if we were just focusing on our own style and the one way we like to play levels with that one cool idea we had, we're gonna get bogged down way too early. So this sheet here is just encouraging people to put it out there, share it with the community, right? Maybe these ideas will inspire somebody else and somebody else will give some ideas that inspire you. But together, we have this many ideas to pull from and we never have to let it bog down our progress. Uh, then we have knowledge. We collect knowledge just about anything we learn that say like, oh, I didn't know that uh, About playing Mario Maker 2. We put it in here. We're up to 367 and principles Are the golden result of all that hard work? Uh, these are the hardest things to come up with but these rules these guidelines these principles are when you understand them and strictly adhere to them are what gives your level design uh, a particular amount of clarity and in its intent clarity in the ideas it's trying to express and quality uh, as far as what makes good levels and and so on and so forth. So we've been collecting these. There's comparatively fewer uh, principles than there are everything else, but when we play and something really <laughs> disappoints us when we're playing user-made levels, that's pretty much because we have expectations and those expectations when broken point to a principle and those principles that it points to are usually and probably things that are good because we are all used to playing Mario levels because Mario Maker 2 wasn't a thing uh, until recently. So that's a general idea. Lots of cool things from that one. Let's go to Fire Cakes. We already played this one last week. So let's play, let's play Bleach's uh, dexterity level. Right here right now. So Bleach created a level to showcase dexterity in general. Uh, water levels are really good for doing that because you kind of have to hit the button a lot instead of holding a button.
Oh, come on! These fish are jerks. Stay in your lane. I wonder if they're ever gonna make invisible tracks. Ooh, that was close. Almost wasted everybody's time. Probably control right here where you're weaving in between fish and you have to also get coins and this these coins encourage you to stay still so a little bit more control these patterns right here remind me of VVV VVV's uh, Super Gravitron you know colored projectiles that fly in from the side in particular patterns that you have to swim through in a horizontal thin corridor kind of thing no secret for me why is this one a brick down here? I don't understand. And then the green fish come back apparently. They home on two. <laughs> Got it! Yes! Your position. And we kill them all. Yeah, nice control. The control got uh, more and more. More and more uh, skill intensive, more and more intense. That part right at the end where fish are coming back, there's coins and there's booze and there's more fish. You can definitely feel the difficulty ramping up, and and when we do these assignments uh, correctly, you can you can feel that it's stressing one very particular kind of skill at a time. So that's really cool. So those are pretty much all the assignments. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because we covered all these last time. Cool. So I guess I didn't show my level last time. It wasn't really uploaded, so I might as well just show you what I did. So I did three assignment sixes because I'm crazy. And there's three assignment fives and two assignment fours. So let's just do this one. Spin to win dexterity. Moco Locus is pretty interesting, popping in on a lot of our levels and playing them. So this is about speed dexterity, right? So I create this level, you grab this, you're like, ooh, free. And you grab this, and you're like, ah ha ha. Oop, aww. We're starting over. Maybe I should have made this first part a little more flat so that just spinning will do the job, but... The faster you spin, the, the safer you are. So it's like, just spin, spin, spin. I probably could have made a level where you, you know, there's a clear condition where you don't jump if I really wanted you to spin to win a lot, but I'm not about that. I should have left that. Yeah, like that. And then everything starts to slow down a little bit more. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Attacks from the front and behind. Ah, oh, no! I swear I hit that. I didn't. Maybe I should have had just a lot more uh, buzzy beetles and raining shells coming down. But yeah, you really don't pay attention too much about the hazards if you're spinning the wind. That's the whole point of that. Uh, my hand kind of hurts because that was a lot of speed. Or that was a, yeah, yeah, a lot of speed. So here is an interesting scene. You might remember this from a uh, Super Mario World level. Typically, you're supposed to drop down here without the donuts and, and uh, press forward and then continue. But for this particular case, I want you to go through those yellow blocks, so if you make that mistake the first time, now you shouldn't. So with the cape, this is super easy. It's really hard to mess up! Oh, I messed it up. But you can always just come back on this one. Uh, the cape really makes it easy because it hits stuff on the side as you fall, which makes going into that hole a lot easier if I actually pay attention. Oh, I need to check the Twitch chat. 
I only have so many monitors. Do you want to do a troll level? Of course not. <laughs> I don't like trolls. Okay. So then everything is a little harder. You instantly take damage there. Uh, and then you have to get into the right hole for this one. So like... Oh. Oh. And now you realize you've made a terrible mistake. So this one tests control because you have to very carefully hit all the blocks or just kind of like risk it and go down this way. Oops. Now the ultimate test, if you were slacking off before, you shouldn't have because this is what it's all about. No! Oh, he didn't even burn! What the? How did he not get burned? How did he not get burned? Nicholas Cage, please. That was weird. I wonder what I did different. It's kind of hard to set up some of these more elaborate traps. But this one's interesting because you can just hold left and right and, and measure yourself against a wall, which makes it really easy. But on the next one, I put spikes up, so you really have to play on the in-betweens. Oh, I, but then that's enough, and you can win. I want to show that off again. So I like I reset you back two sections on this one because I want you to be able to practice here uh, before you go over here, right? Uh, oh. It's really about developing the skill and not trying to get lucky. I made this as a uh, tight or as lenient as I could make it. Like that. So I have the control now. I didn't before. Uh, practice makes perfect. <laughs> this soft locked you before if you actually got through a small Mario, which is kind of funny. And I had to put this here. <laughs> oh, this is a cool test right at the end. You see the the goal going up and down. And if you want to get to the one up at the top of it, you have to decide how much earlier do I need to spin in order to drop at the right time. But if you're too early, um, you have to go left and right, which is part of your training. I hope somebody really enjoyed that ending because I thought it was hilarious. So here's another one that I made, Dexterity. Uh, this is testing, what is it testing? Speed? So this one tests speed, the spin to win cave test of stamina, which should have been obvious because, no, which one did I test? What's spin to win? Let's, let's go, let's uh, take a quick little look. I did, I guess I did multiple speeds? Yeah, that, should, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So, back to the game. Oh, did not get the, uh, what I wanted. Wow, what, what's happening? What? What's happening? Why can't I fly? Oh, uh, I'm letting go of the run button for whatever reason. I didn't know you couldn't fly without, without holding the, uh, run button. These platforms make it really easy to get up here. And these coins, you don't even have to move once you go left and right. Very simple. Uh, not really testing much of your stamina because I give you um, those platforms to rest your hand. But this is the original course by Akamarak. You may remember it on stream. You have to actually hit the button quite a few times to get up there. And then here, you have to float. I'll grab that. And here's the final one. It's even harder. Missed it. No! Yeah, I already got all those. Well, I can always come back. Unless I die. So it's possible to get all those. Um, and I wish I did the clear condition on this a little better, but whatever. So this one's about speed skill. You mash that button, you kill the things. If I put the yays there so you can know like what you're actually intended to do. Oh, okay. 
And if you miss, you can't throw fireballs. And that was from uh, Fire Cakes' this level. And now for the really crazy contraption that I created. Oh no! But look, I can't get it. Oh, now I'm gonna... I can't even kill myself. Yeah, this is a, a different kind of soft lock. Because now you can't even get back. Yeah, the, the... Getting locked on this one was a little, like... I couldn't figure out all the combinations in time. And now, I'll just show you what it looks like. really want to show that. You're not gonna give me anything? So you're supposed to like do this and... Oh. Wow. Well. Now you'll have to do it for yourself. I force you to get that. You're supposed to be like, plop, plop. Plop, 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 like that. And then get through, like that. It's kind of lenient on the time, right? And then you, like, give this guy a little... Boop. And you get all the coins you need to win. So, whether or not you get most of the coins here, or you get them all on the top level, that, those are your options, and you win. But yeah, mashing that button to get all those fireballs to come out fast enough for you to walk forward, and while still aiming, fun stuff. It goes to show you that Nintendo really doesn't create challenges for you to do stuff like that. My hand's kind of sore right now, even from flying and doing those fireballs. So like, Mario keeps it easy on your fingers. Something to note about controls design. Mechanics. Let's show off Yoshi first. So this is inspired by a level, uh, Made It Akamarok? I always forget. Wait, it's called, this one's called, yeah, Akamarok made it. So he made a level where you have full stack power-ups and you go through and just kind of wreck everything. So this is what his original level looked like. He had a P-switch here, but... So that was supposed to teach you a little something about spitting things out against walls in order to catch them in midair. So when you take that knowledge and you come over here... And you have all the time you need... Just blast stuff. I like how I kept those guys alive with a tiny little platform underneath the lava. I thought that was hilarious. Okay, so now you have to- this is all about harmony. Like, can you really coordinate your hand properly? That's too high for a normal jump, so you have to do something like this, this. And then you have to do something like this, 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 and this, and then this, this, this. Like that. No! I'm surprised it bumped me out and didn't give me the, the P-Switch button. No! No! Any questions? <laughs> You can um, fire this thing, but you can't fire it. But you always stick out the tongue kind of on accident. 
That would have been an interesting kind of control too, where you don't want to lick up whatever Yoshi's licking up. But that's a different idea. So right here, you're like, how do I, how do I eat this? You're supposed to line things up and then shoot it against yourself. Okay, we'll try it again. Hop, hop, hop. Hop, hop. Oh shoot. Okay. No! What? What was that? Uh, this might be hard. Okay. I got this. Oh, that's cheap. You could just do it up in there. Ah, ah! Well, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, it's really hard to make a situation where you force the player to do really nuanced and uh, complex buttons. So this is why this this whole contraption is a little more awkward than that. That's what you're supposed to do, and then not 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 hit that. Cool, got it. Huh. Oh, I just freaked myself out. I'll show you a technique for running at full speed with Yoshi. That's how you can reverse directions as quickly as possible. You do a one frame turnaround, spin, and then you DI back to Yoshi. So look at all that momentum if you don't do it like this. And you do that. But if you get it, it looks like... And you're already moving back in the other direction. So, advanced techniques for everybody. Yeah, I could have definitely made that Yoshi thing a little harder where, uh, something. But we're gonna try this path. This is hard mode, okay. Oh, cool. So that's the basic lesson. You hit your head. You go back down for another loop. Uh, like that. This section right here is the original one from a level my brother created, Dr. Haji. And this is one where you need to approach it by... Oh no, I didn't get it. So here you have to approach it from the side to get enough running momentum. And then you have to flop over here and then float again and repeat. And if you do it just right, you're a genius. And this one makes it even more explicit, right? Look at all this extra junk I had to put in just to make sure that, you know, you, you did it correctly. So the yays are supposed to clue you in on, I put yays on all my levels to clue you in on. If you just hold forward here, I think you can get up on top like that. Kind of tight. There's a way to do that without even getting hit. You have to really wait till your Mario's. Um, there. Ah, I didn't do it. So if you get hit here instead of you know complaining, you just hit that and do that, and then you close it up. Give yourself another shot. So then you're like, oh. I didn't know how to make it to where if you got hit, you would um, have to start over because that's not how the cape works. So in general, I'm gonna try to show you what it looks like without getting hit. Okay, stop it. I can't believe that has sideways momentum like that. There you go. If you just hold against this rock while floating, you'll have enough. Whoop. Why, why can't I figure out how to float? Here we go. Yes! Whee! That's control up the <laughs> up the bing bang, seriously. Uh, to, to run, to do the aerial virtual runway to get enough momentum to get off the wall, to angle up, 
hit the block, hold down, volley back up, float, drop quickly because you can't just float all the way down, refloat, and then do it all again and hit the same spot twice. Yep. Enjoy. That's why it's hard mode. So yeah, uh, Kaizo levels, other difficult levels in Mario Maker, you've seen a lot of them. They highlight a very particular nuance, right? Like, oh, you didn't know you could do this, and they usually try to force you to do it in order to pass the course. Lots of different ways to try to force players to do things, but it gets harder, it gets more and more cluttered as far as the design goes. It gets more and more restricted. It's harder to actually make the player do things. All kinds of problems happen when you go that route. Ah, uh, uh, fun. Okay. So next week we are talking about timing. Let me go back to this. Timing is probably going to be the most fun for Mario. Mario is an action game. He's all about moving through space and getting to places at the right time in the right way. Uh, timing is a really big deal in action games and Mario is uh, you know, all things considered, a very simple action game. You just kind of jump around and don't fall in the pit, right? Uh, but timing, it's going to show us that there's so much more... There's so much more variety and complexity and and fun to have when you understand the variety of and the range of timings you can have in a Mario challenge. So static timing is just, you know, it's the same timing no matter what, every single time, whether that's like... A Falcon Punch in Smash Brothers, it's always the same timing unless he holds backwards and he does a long version, but ignore that for now. Um, lots of things in lots of games are on the same timer, right? Uh, fireball projectiles from Mario and Mario Maker move the same speed, they create the same kind of bounce timers. Enemies walk at the same speed, they create the same kind of timers uh, going back and forth. And there's not a lot changing happening there, but the opposite of a static timer uh, is a complex timer. So this includes everything from subdividing beats, syncopating beats, uh, elaborate, irregular, or layered timing. So two timings going on at once, a time that speeds up, uh, a time that's just a lot of random sounds, or a lot of random moments like here and there smattered. That's all fits under complex timing. And then there's internal timing, which you have to have the sense of timing already internalized in order to do well. And there's external timing that gives you some kind of stimulus to, to give you a hint at what the timing's going to be. For video games, it's almost always uh, visual, but maybe it's audit, uh, auditory, right? You hear a wee and you're like, okay, well, I can time it based off the wee kind of sound effect. Uh, it happens. So a lot of things in video games both have audio and visual. So usually you don't have to um, think too hard to find one or the other. But that's external timing. They're helping you figure out the timing just based on um, that feedback. And a lot of things in Mario have to be external timing because they interact with each other. Mario can kill an enemy or lots of things can happen in order for the, the interplay to sort of shake out differently. And then there is exce uh, acceleration and deceleration. This is static or complex timing, but your ability to do so uh, while steadily increasing or decreasing in speed. Uh, and then the final one is tracks, so your ability to keep comprehend and execute multiple independent timing elements, right? Uh, so that's that's timing in a nutshell. And like I said before, in Mario that applies to so many things, but I'm just going to play a random, not random, but one of our workshop levels, this Branching Pipe Race by Cavalier X, workshop member, auto scroll multiplayer versus, okay. So auto scroll in itself is a kind of timer, and if the uh, if the thing speeds up, that's a different kind of uh, timer. That's already going into the accelerate category. But like, enemy coming at me, static timer. Okay. All right. All right, we've got some choices. Alright, thanks for telling me it was safe. So the blue just brought me back here, but now I'm big, and I can't mess it up. Uh, I have the enemy, so I think the enemy won't spawn as long as I'm holding this. Okay. Another static timer challenge with the enemy. I'm kicking this is a different kind of static timer challenge, but it's faster. There's a little bit of a dexterity harmony thing going on there. 
Ooh, that was close. Well, I'm gonna need a little bit more. Probably a cape. Ooh, thank you. What's with these? Oh, did you know you can do this too? Uh, you can change directions mid-air uh, when you fly like this. So you can um, go in one direction. Whoa, what's happening? Do it. And then end up going in the other direction. Uh, you can also do the spin twirl to go upwards. And then when you do that, you can instantly land and get your momentum back to fly again. That's something that I learned for the first time just a few days ago. So when you do this, and if you're if you're floating down, oh, if you do this and you're floating down like this, wow, this right when you hold forward when you land, you can just instantly fly again because your character has enough momentum, right? It's very particular to the spin state. Ah! That's what I get. Why I do this in auto scrollers? So like right now, I'm falling, but if I hold forward... Oh shoot, didn't have enough. You just, all you have to do is hold forward a little bit if you cut your momentum off. Oh. But you can only do it in the spin mode. Spin mode, boss. So like this, I'm falling vertically. All I have to do is hold forward a little bit, and I can fly again. Falling vertically, hold forward a little bit. Ah! Why? That means you can do this. So what, what a really cool thing you can do is this. This, this. This. Ah, oh, come on, do it, do it, do it. This, this. Do it. This, this. That. So in a very tight space, you can rebound uh, with your fly cape. Interesting stuff. Like this. Wait, and then forward. Ah, uh, that should be enough. So you wait. Oh, no, I didn't mean to go that high. Okay, here, and then... Uh, so I guess you need like a little bit more than two bricks of uh, forward momentum time. Yeah, to get it. Here's another interesting thing. If you get maximum running speed... Uh, I don't think I can do it there, no. If you get maximum running speed running off a platform, Mario keeps his arms out. Uh, so like, let's see. Uh, I won't be able to do it. Alright, let's get out of here. Chris experimenting with those power-up blocks. Oh, better get up there. Now I'm gonna need what? A uh, spiky helmet? Yep. It's gonna be so fun designing multiplayer specific levels. We better get that ability to play with. Oh! Auto scrolls. going on not there's no any coins over here or anything to kind of like grab while waiting
Oh, come on, why isn't that enough? It's kind of an interesting challenge here where it's uh, a little bit back and forth right here to get out. see the ground before uh, I needed to land right there, so that's kind of a camera issue. I was so close. <laughs> yeah, that's not even to mention the timing that it takes to do certain techniques and... and... <laughs> the aware of forest mushrooms. And then we'll wrap it up. That's a nice way to make me not kick. Oh, I float. I lost it. Strange that he put that ah! power up block like right there, right after you get a mushroom. You can grass don't belong here. It's a P switch. Do these turn into coins if they're spinning? hold down. Interesting. I did not know that the shell could do this stuff underwater. It's fast. Interesting. It allows you to get out of the water very easily. Heavy pipe. Oh, you can be dry bones underwater. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm gonna write that stuff down. Like this, like this, like this. Knowledge. Mario cannot slide downhill if he is holding something. <laughs> um, Mario and... Dry shell Mario can surf on the water really fast and hold down to submerge. Uh, and um, dry shell Mario, what did I say? Can break apart on a moving platform and then stay broken when underwater. You can see it. 
Uh, I think it's any for the most part. So trying to deal with the enemies, you wouldn't have been able to get that. That's kind of interesting. You have to be quick enough. Oh wow, Greg could have made it to where you had to have the, a shell or like a dry shell or something in order to get through quickly though. Interesting. Nice bonus room though. Nope, didn't get it. Oh, let's see if these courses have been put in. So, for the closing thing for the stream, I'll show you what it's like to put in feedback for of course doing this every week is just a decent way to show you what we do all the time uh, this is beware the forest mushrooms that's kind of funny uh, the code for it is m 9 d 4 h j 5 j f maker Golem. It wasn't a workshop assignment. Gameplay ideas. Uh, dry shell surfing. And swimming Goomba. Theme forest theme with platforms. Moving with basically layout. There's horizontal, horizontal tunnel with uh, pillar-like uh, outcroppings. Nothing too crazy there. Basic rectangular shapes. Enemies. We had Goomba, Goom. Or these are Goom Galumba. Galumba. I don't even know how to spell Galumba. Goom brats, uh, cheap, cheap. That should be about it. Coins, all obtainable in one go. I think so. I didn't see any that were crazy. Uh, big coins used in bonus room. Uh, uh, power ups, we have the. What's it called? The super feather? And then we have the dry shell. And we have fire flower. I uh, use okay. unique applications for any of this. Mm. No, but for layers, uh, if you grab the fire flower, you can defeat enemies easier. But then you won't be able to get the key in the grounded block. Easy. It's a swimming and jumping out of the water is pretty dexterous. Pretty speedy, speed dexterous. Knowledge, um, nothing seemed too, I think you could have ground pounded that question block with a, no, you can't, not with the dry shell. Yeah, I don't think there was uh, any significant randomization though. Though, Goom Goomba falling into the water made the water a lot more dangerous. That was kind of interesting. 
Reflex, really nothing. Timing, um, the bonus rooms all had moving slash timing, timing elements. There was like four bonus rooms. One had a P-switch, one had the gusty gusts, one had the moving platforms like this, one had them at the top. Jeez, four bonus rooms. So that could probably go under basic layout too. Uh, four bonus rooms accessed via pipes. Um, nothing crazy there, nothing crazy. NBA, don't mind if I do. Fairness, uh, oh, I should put Chris's level in here too. Everything seemed fair. Pretty straightforward. Uh, secrets, four bonus rooms, and... And some blocks, one of which contained a key. So that's where uh, the bonus rooms probably go under secrets and layers. Over here, I should have just said that uh, four bonus rooms that were all single screen. That's more of a layout thing. Pacing. Slow and steady. Nothing too nothing that spiked or was too crazy really. Or that was significantly more challenging. Speed runnable. I assume you just surf to win. Surf on the dry the whole time and it's probably not that interesting. Let me play it real quick. And we'll see what ideas get developed. Oh, restart. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. You get momentum on the land, you try to preserve it in the air, then you, you find ways to get it back. That's neat. And then, oh, that's neat. And then, yeah, then you can just pounce off an enemy and try to get it. Uh, I guess uh, depending on how much this is a diversion. No, nope. not bad for a speed run course actually. It's a layer, which we will talk about shortly. So yeah, there's like a slow and steady exploration layer. Let's see where the coins lead us. Yep, it's not. So getting all the coins is definitely the slow route. Slow. <sighs> is it possible for me to jump over that Goomba? Do I even need to? <sighs> so close. Why would you put that Goomba there? What's a Goomba? I swear I'm hitting the jump. Oh, that's what's happening. So this thingy, uh, when you move, oh, that's not good. When you move, you hop. And if you jump right in the middle of the hop, I think you don't get the, uh, let's see. We'll see. Nope. I just need to hit it perfect. I need to stop double tapping down. Nope, no comments. Definitely didn't need to kill myself all those times. Like a run and just jumper, run and jump. Cool. So back over here, and we'll close. Speed run, bounce off the. T uh, I assume you just sir. 
So surfing on the dry shell is an interesting combination of finding enemies to bounce off of and land to run off of to get more momentum. You can also jump repeatedly in the water with the dry shell surfing to maintain more mo more speed. Um, hmm. I didn't think there was any camera problems. But I guess if you count that first jump as a a tricky jump that's one where if you just leap forward really fast you'll probably be in trouble I think we have a principle about that hmm. okay well that's it for now Alright guys, that's another stream, another week of the Mario Maker Workshop. We got lots more courses to make, uh, courses to make feedback on, and information to log in. The discussion is always going on our Discord channel, so if you're interested in any of this, join us on the Discord channel, all the links to which can be found on our website, designoriented.net, or you can find us on Twitter at Twitter slash designoriented, so really easy way to reach us. Uh, we talk about game design as well all the time, so the Mario Maker course is really just an extension of everything we've been learning. Uh, game design and we're just using it as a really interesting and colorful outlet to test and learn a lot of these ideas so that's it for this week next week we are going deep dive on the tile oh, actually i'm gonna be out of town but i'll probably get back and stream on monday so i'll see you guys on monday next week but keep making levels and keep thinking about mario in the meantime later